family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, also known as the Palace on the Prairie. And welcome to Norman, where the number six Oklahoma Sooners are ready to take on the UC. L.A. Bruins, Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joel Platt. And welcome to Norman, Oklahoma. We were here last week. Gus, generally, you're never as good as you think you are. You're never as bad as you think you are. We thought OU oh, were world beaters after last week, and we thought UCLA was going to struggle all year. Something tells me UCLA is going to play better than we think, and OU might struggle to keep that same pace and excellence that we saw against Florida Atlanta. OU won the toss deferred, so UCLA to receive. Austin Seibert will kick it away. Darnay Holmes and Darius Pickett back deep for the Bruins. Oklahoma. UCLA, and we're underway from Norman. This one kicked deep into the end zone for touchback. And so that will bring out Dorian Thompson Robinson. For young players, generally their biggest jump comes from game one to game two. Now, he didn't start in week one, but he played the majority of the game after Wilton Spade, the graduate transfer, went down with a back injury. So his first start here comes today. This game plan will likely look different for UCLA fans than it looked last week. I expect more quarterback-featured runs. We'll see if they do that here on the first series. Look at the atmosphere he faces. True freshman quarterback for UCLA. He was a four-star recruit. Arrived in Westwood this summer. First down and 10 at the 25. He'll roll out, throw the run. That one sailing high, intended for Caleb Wilson. They're trying to get the ball to really one of their most sure-handed offensive weapons, the tight end, Caleb Wilson. His dad played here at Oklahoma back in the 80s. It's got to be a, quite a thrill for him to come here and play on this field like his dad did. Back in 1988. That brings up second down and 10 of the 25. Joshua Kelly, number 27, the pistol back. Thompson Robinson hands it off, and no room there for Joshua Kelly. He's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Mark Jackson and Kenneth Mann leading the way. We talked about a lot about Kenneth Mann in our meeting yesterday with the coaches. Mike Stoops said this guy played like a man last week against Florida Atlantic, and he's already doing a nice job here today. Richard Jr. from Burleson, Texas. Third down and 10 of the 25. Opening series for UCLA. Thompson Robinson looking with time underneath, and it's caught. Diamond Lee, but he is dropped immediately. Kenneth Murray with the tackle. UCLA three and out. I tell you what, you see Kenneth Murray in street clothes. He looks like a superhero. He looks like the real Luke Cage power man. Listen, this guy started as a true freshman last year at middle linebacker for Oklahoma. You don't do that unless you're exceptionally talented. And he's going to grow into his own. I believe that he's going to have a big year for them on this defensive side. He's grown into a leadership role, and he's clearly one of the more talented players on the field. Stephen Flintoff will send it away. C.D. Lamb, the sophomore, standing at his own 30. Flintoff drives it far side, and that one goes out of bounds. And a little pushing and shoving and trash talking going on. Special teams between these two fired up programs. So it looks like Oklahoma will have the ball around the 45 yard line. Great field position for Kyler Murray. Making his second start this season. Replacing Baker Mayfield. Sixth overall college start. I think the perception, Gus, is that he's more experienced than he is. You know, this is only his sixth start, and he does need to continue to get reps, get his feet wet, and continue to prove that he can, can consistently get the ball down the field and throw it with accuracy like he did in week one in his passing game. He was 9 of 11 for 209 yards, two touchdowns, four carries, 23 yards, and he left the game with four minutes remaining in the second quarter. First and 10 at the 45. And I thought Lincoln Riley was very... Uh... Full start. Number 56, offense. Five-yard penalty. 
for first down. I thought Lincoln Riley had some interesting comments about taking on UCLA compared to Florida Atlantic. You're taking on Division One athletes, big time Division One athletes in this game. It's yeah, going to be a difference. There's just a difference with the Power Five program. All right, and then Lane Kiffin would even tell you that the head coach of FAU. They're going to be dealing with some guys that can clearly run, including an outside linebacker that was a five-star kid, Jalen Phillips, who's one of the better players in the Pac-12. First down at 15 after the penalty. Rodney Anderson in the backfield. Play fake. Here's Murray going downtown. Incomplete. Hollywood Brown, the intended receiver, no flag on the play. Darnay Holmes was right in his hip pocket, and he says, no, no, no. Well, Darnay Holmes, the sophomore, he was running step for step. Now, you're going to want a penalty if you're Oklahoma, but I think this was incidental. It was more foot contact than anything. Well, actually, no. I'm going to correct myself. What a great look from our camera crew right there. Holmes clearly arrived early. Definitely should have been a flag. Holmes, a sophomore from Pasadena, California. He went to Calabasas, second and 15 at the 40. Anderson, the single setback with Kyler Murray. Here's Murray to toss it. Looks underneath. Ball caught. C.D. Lamb. What a catch. One-handed out of bounds at midfield. Yo, watch this catch. I mean, this ball is, is clearly behind him. Watch your right. Reach back. What? He reached back one-handed, grabbed it out of the air, and continued running. Oh, my goodness. C.D. Lamb set the OU freshman records for receptions and yards in a game against Texas Tech with nine for 147. Last year, 46 catches for C.D. Lamb for 807 yards and seven touchdowns. Third down and five at midfield. Murray steps up in the pocket, dumps it off, and they have the first down. Calcaterra, who they are so high on. And he's a California kid. Rancho Santa Margarita. Oklahoma quickly to the line of scrimmage. First down. Here's the handoff. Anderson flag on the play as he crunches forward and picks up about eight. I think they caught UCLA offside there. It might have been just in alignment. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Offense. Five-yard penalty for first down. Well, uh, this is the, the problem when you go too fast, right? And there are some young guys for Oklahoma, and they just didn't have enough guys lined up on the line of scrimmage and get the call. I thought they were going to get Jalen Phillips, that outside linebacker I was talking about. He's lining up awful close to that line of scrimmage. Now, remember, up front, we've got Creed Humphrey making his start. He did not start last week at center, so a new center for Oklahoma than we had a week ago. First down at 15 at the 47. Hollywood Brown in motion. They dump it to him in the flats, have him throwing hot and incomplete. Marquise Brown. Anytime you can get the ball to him in any fashion, it's a win for the offense. And that time, the quarterback, Kyler Murray, just got to put it on his frame. You, you know, on those swing routes, in particular when you got fast guys like Hollywood Brown, you've got to hit him dead in the chest. Is that a hard throw? It looks like very a hard, hard Very hard. One of the harder throws that you have to make because he's generally running directly away from you, and you've got to put it in about a one-foot box on his upfield shoulder. Very difficult to do. Second down and 15 at the 47. Murray to throw it again. Barsad caught. C.D. Lamb tries to turn it up, and he'll be wrestled down by Nate Metters. Well, here we go again on a third down, and an opportunity for UCLA to get off the field, potentially. Remember, on the last third down, they went to Grant Calcaterra, the tight end, and he's replacing Mark Andrews, the Mackey Award winner, and Mark, Mark Andrews made his entire living here at Oklahoma on third down. Third and ten at the 42. Andrews in the slot at the top of your screen. Play fake. Murray sprinting out of the pocket. Throws on the move. And it's caught. Looks like it is a catch. That's Miles Tees. And it's a first down for OU. I think the, the back official may have run in and called that incomplete. Yeah, exactly. So we got the front official that's calling that a, a completed catch. He's got the best view of that. And, and the, the back official, the side judge, ran in late and overruled for an incompletion. So that'll make it fourth down and 10 for Oklahoma. 
And the Sooners will have to punt it away. So if I'm UCLA, that's a win. No doubt. Huge win for that defense for UCLA. Oh, you're getting on the plus side of the 50. And the Bruins still forcing a punt. Kyle Phillips, the deep man, as Austin Seibert, one of the few combo punter place kickers in college football. They say that Austin is a pro, but the big decision for him is whether he's going to be a kicker or a punter. Punk, young man. Punt. Yeah, but the glory is in the place kicking, as you know, Joel. Yeah, but the length of career is in punting. <laughs> Fourth down and 15. Good snap, Seibert pops it in the air. And it goes into the end zone for a touchback. So Dorian Thompson Robinson. NBA guys in the house tonight. Look at that. Russell Westbrook played at UCLA for Ben Howell. That's Buddy Heel, number 14. And Trey Young, two former Sooner stars in the NBA now. First down and 10 of the 20. Thompson Robinson rolling out of the pocket, throws underneath, and it's incomplete. Some hard hitting going on. Theo Howard, the intended receiver for Parnell Motley, the junior from D.C. with the stop. And he just sat right in his zone and allowed that play to come to him. Then he goes low, not to the head or neck area, leads with the shoulder. That's just textbook. Second down and 10 of the 20-yard line. I love these DBs for OU. Motley, Buki, Norwood, Royals, Cowboys. Here's the option, and the pitch goes to Kelly. He is struck out and taken down. Kenneth Murray. Here's the problem. If you're going to run option, you've got to have the running back more even with you. Watch how the running back is way behind the pitch, and at that point, he's pitching it essentially backwards. So the alignment just totally off for UCLA, and Ryan Jones is able to make the play here late coming up along with Kenneth Murray. That's a loss of six. Third down at 16 at the 14-yard line for the Bruins. Thompson Robinson fires over the middle, and it's caught. Big-time catch coming up for Caleb. Wilson, Wilson down the sideline. Can he get there and out of bounds at the 20? Khalil Hyman and Trey Norwood push him out of bounds, a gain of 63. The safety there, Houghton, Khalil Houghton got way off the hash, all the way out to the number, and Caleb Wilson just runs right up the seam. Easy pitch and catch. How about the throw from the true freshman? And Caleb Wilson turns on the Jets. He's a Richard Jr. from Dallas. First and 10 at the 21. Thompson Robinson runs it with room, and he'll pick up maybe nine on the play. Buki with the tackle. And that's what I thought we would see more of this week than we did last week for UCLA when they played Cincinnati is the quarterback featured zone read. That's just a gift to the running back. If the defensive end squeezes down, the quarterback keeps it around the edge. That's simple stuff for a young quarterback, and he's got the athleticism to make it work. Second down and one at the 12. And a handoff straight ahead. Casimir Allen picks up the first down for the Bruins. And this is what you have to do as a defensive end. Watch the defensive end here. He's just going to come up the field, and he's just going to sit right there and force the handoff. you got to force that ball out of the hands of the quarterback because the quarterback's going to hurt you a lot more than the running back will. Force him to hand it off, then squeeze down and make the, make the tackle. Gain of three. First down and goal at the nine. Bolu. Ola run for me. Checks in at running back. And they give it on the end around. Casimir Allen. Looks like a touchdown, UCLA. And they're, now they're saying he got out of bounds at the three. There was just an excellent block on the edge by Theo Howard, one of the veterans for this team. He was blocking Parnell Motley, squeezed the corner way down, allowed Allen to get the edge. And Allen is one of the fastest players in the entire country. He set the state record in California in the 100 meter in high school at 10-4. This dude can fly. And Chip Kelly knows about fast guys. Remember, he had DeAnthony, the Black Mamba. At Oregon, second down and goal at the three. Only well, run for me remains in the game. First charge, timeout, UCLA. And Chip it's Kelly calls the timeout. timeout. 9.04 to go, no score, but the Bruins are knocking on the door with these young guys on the road.
quite know why. So looks like it'll be again from the three-yard line. Really confusing what's going on here with the officials, guys. Second down to go from the three. All around for me. And he submarines into the end zone for a touchdown. So how about this? UCLA striking first, 8.59 to play in the first quarter. And the Bruins have a chance to take a 7 0 lead. I think that the key block here is the tight end. Watch Caleb Wilson as he's going to squeeze all the way down, but then he gets in front of his man and walls him off and creates the seam. That's the seam that Ola Rumpfrey hits, and he's able to squeeze through and score a touchdown. So Wilson with a big grab on that series, and then 6'4, 235, walls it off. Great block inside. J.J. Molson will come in to attempt the extra point. Oklahoma so dominant last week. 28 to nothing after the first quarter against Florida Atlantic. Different story. Kyler Murray has to get this offense going. He's already thrown more incompletions in this game than he did all of last week. J.J. Molson, extra point. And it's good. 7-0, you see By that long completion to Caleb Wilson, a nice throw from the true freshman there over the middle. Wilson sends it away. Sutton and Trey Brown are back deep. And this will be Trey Brown straight ahead. Trey Brown still on the move at the 40. It's the corner. Trey Brown down the sideline. High stepping and finally tackled. Out of bounds. What a return for Trey Brown, the sophomore from Tulsa. Well, you're going to get a mistake here from UCLA. Watch 24, Jay Shaw. As he comes up to take on the block, look, he jumped to the right side, and now there's a huge lane right there for Trey to take off to the left side. Easy return there, and it's all set up by the kickoff team not staying in their lanes. You've got to do your job, or else there's going to be a big play on the other side. Marcellius Sutton, number 21, with a great block on that return an 85 yard return for the Sooners so they'll start first down and 10 at the UCLA 12 yard line let's see if they go to the run game here they did not attempt a, ru a rushing play on that first series after last week they had over eight yards per carry Anderson had over 20 yards per carry and they're gonna come out with an empty backfield here Kyler the only guy in the backfield remember Murray's got great feet he can run it first down and 10 at the 12. Big lanes in the defense right now, too. Murray, quarterback draw, gets outside, wiggles, and finally is wrestled down at the five-yard line. Adarius Pickett with the tackle. Key block there comes from their kind of their adjuster back, their fullback, Carson Meyer. Lines up just in the backfield. He's able to pull around, pin the linebacker, and that's what allowed Murray to get to the outside. So Rodney Anderson checks in. Anderson with a 100-yard game a week ago. On five carries. Second down and three at the five. Anderson straight ahead. Pulls his way close to the first down. Looks like he'll be short. Keyshawn, Lucier South, Obronia combining on the tackle. Big and you're bringing in the big fellas. Troy James, a defensive tackle in the game, number 94. He's 300 pounds. Redshirt freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Third down and one at the three. There's a big boy. Out of the eye formation. Anderson, touchdown shooters, Mr. Anderson. Well, the key is the movement that you're going to get from these two players, and then you're going to pull the guard around the edge, and Anderson just does a nice job of being patient, finding the seam, and then you get behind your pads and pull your way into the end zone. So Rodney Anderson 
with the touchdown. Oklahoma extra point. Cyber. And we are level at seven. 7.20 to play. First quarter, big time return for Trey Brown. And Oklahoma levels it. Seven up. Hit it again. Cyber. And he drills this one deep, as usual, out of bounds. Now our college football triple header continues next as rivals Iowa and Iowa State go head-to-head. -head. Then back home power square off as Bryce Love and Stanford battle USC. It's all right here on Fox. On the Fox Sports app. That Cyhawk trophy, Iowa State. They didn't get the chance to play week one, so that's a big advantage for Iowa in that ball game. And then we'll see if Bryce Love can get going after not having a great week one. Now, granted, he's going up against USC team, Gus. They gave up 300 yards of rushing to UNLV, so something tells me that Bryce could get going tonight against the Trojans. First down to 10 to the 25. Casimir Allen in the backfield. Play fake. Thompson Robinson in trouble. Stays on his feet. Gets out of the pocket. And goes down at the 20. So that is a sack. A five-yard loss, Trey Brown defensively. Uh, just an unbelievable job escaping the pressure in the backfield, but this is where the true freshman mistake happens. Once he's out on the edge, throw the ball away. Create second and 10, not second and 15. And that's what it is, second and 15 from the 20-yard line. Play fake, Thompson Robinson, and he is smashed. Kenneth Murray, shot out of a cannon. Man. And it wasn't even a blitz. Watch Gus as Murray is just going to sit, sit, sit. Now he's going to come. Boom. Right up the middle. But he didn't come right away, which allowed that offensive lineman to get separated, creating the seam. And then here comes Kenneth Murray for the set. Also, Neville Gallimore was a disruptor. Number 90. Third down to 21 at the 14. Roll the run for me. Comes into the game. And they'll give it to him. Conservative play for Jim Kelly. Armani Bledsoe, first man to hold a run for me. And the Bruins will have to punt. It was, it was conservative, you're right, partner, but it was the right call with a young quarterback because a punt is way better than an interception right there or a fumble or some sort of mistake. You know, you get the crowd noise up a little bit. You can clearly see the elevated heart rate and the pace of play starting to get a little too quick for your offense, so a nice play call there. C.D. Lamb, the deep man, as Stefan Flintoff stands inside his own five. Gets it away. Oklahoma blocked the punt last week against Florida Atlantic. C.D. Lamb at the 30. Trying to get outside. And he's ridden out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Good special teams coverage by the Bruins. Let's go to Greg Wolf in Los Angeles for a game break. Their new coach, Joe Moorhead, he was the offensive coordinator for Penn State the last couple of years in their great run with Saquon Barkley. And I think he's going to do really good things there in Starkville. And they're off to a good start today in Manhattan, Kansas. First down to the 28-yard line for OU. Anderson bounces it outside. Gets downhill and finally taken down at the 31-yard line. As a Darius Pickett and Toyaloa come up with the tackle. Second and seven. Murray play action with time. Fires. Calcaterra intended receiver. That's knocked away, but a flag. Nate Metters defensively for the Bruins. Metters was step for step, and this ball was thrown behind Grant Calcaterra. So when he stopped. Pass interference. Number 22, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. That's an automatic first down. Metters is trying to turn back around when Calcaterra stops, right? He's running step for step. He's in great position right here. And then the hand comes out. See it up on the face mask right there? Good call by the officials. It wasn't a lot of contact, but clearly impacting Calcaterra's ability to get back to that ball. Better is a big-time NFL prospect. He opted for one more college season rather than the NFL draft. Did not allow a single touchdown pass last season. First and 10 of the 46. Anderson and Sermon 
in the split backfield behind Kyler Murray. I think this is when they're at their most dangerous. Two backs in the backfield. Sermon. Bottled up. Tries to get outside. The terrific pursuit by the UCLA defense is Jalen Phillips. Gets him a Darius Pickett also in on the play. Yeah, Phillips can run. I mean, watch Phillips. Phillips is going to be right here at the kind of the bottom of your screen. He's going to get blocked all the way down. Now watch 15. He's all the way in the middle. Now he's running on the outside, and he shows you the speed to bring Sermon to the ground. No gain on the play. Second and 10 at the 46. Phillips, a sophomore from Redlands, California. Well, they got to him quickly. We talked to Lincoln Riley in his office yesterday, and there weren't a lot of things to criticize about OU's performance against Florida Atlantic, but he did talk about protection. Uh, and that's, you know, the, the thing was is they were great in the run game, and they have not been all that great today in the run game. Big credit there to number 92, Osa Odigizua, redshirt sophomore from Portland. His brother played at UCLA, was a draft pick back in 2014. So he's uh, in that lineage of Odigizuas here at UCLA. Third down and 14 to the 42. Kyler Murray delivers. And it's caught. Hollywood! Lights! Camera! Action! Hollywood Brown! 58 yards! Game changer! Sometimes your Jimmy's just got to be better than their Joe's, and that's this case right here. Hollywood Brown, just a simple little hook route, and then he's gone. Safety doesn't keep his feet, and once this guy gets a step, it is over. Over. Marquise Brown had a touchdown last week, 133 receiving yards and limited action. And right now, he gives OU a 14-7 to lead. He's got feline quickness, folks. One of the best receivers in America, and his quarterback loves it. 14-7. Right now, Kyler Murray, happy to have number five on his team, 14-7. <laughs> Third and 14, it's like, hey, where's number five? <laughs> we'll throw it to that guy. Very interesting. Talked to Hollywood on the phone this week. He said, yeah, I had to fly to Dallas to talk to Kyler about one thing and one thing in particular. And I said, what? He said, I had to tell him to make sure under all circumstances, he throws me the ball. Oh, man. You know, I love wide receivers, but I hated them all at the same time, right? It's like, you don't, you don't want to have to deal with that until it's third and 14. And Murray did a great job of throwing that ball on time, right? That's his, his role in this is you throw it on time to give Hollywood Brown the most amount of time to make a move after the catch. And then Marquis says, I'm gone. And he also told me, he said, I'll tell you what, Gus, Kyler can really throw the ball. He can put it on me. First down and 10 of the 25. Thompson Robinson underneath. And it's Caleb Wilson once again close to first down. You know, Hollywood says he got all the speed from his mom. And for more, let's go to Jenny Taft. Well, Gus, Shannon James said, yeah, she always knew she was fast running track and also playing softball. She said she and her son used to race when he was little. She knew he had something special. And I asked her, Gus, if she liked the name Hollywood. She said, you tell Gus, we love Hollywood around here. All right. A wonderful thing. That's Hollywood, Florida, folks. Casimir Allen. And Mark Jackson making the tackle. You know, he's even losing the Brown. He's walking around the building now and everyone's like, hey, what's up, Hollywood? <laughs> Good for him. I love it, man. I love it. Second down and 10 of the 35 for UCLA. How do the Bruins respond offensively against this tenacious Sooner defense? Here's the handoff. Allen trying to squeeze through the hole. Curtis Bolton. Famatau combining on the tackle. These are the situations you're trying to avoid if you're UCLA, and that's third down and obvious. Got something like seven or plus. And Chip Kelly knows that he's going to have to get creative in order to keep this rush and some of these linebackers out of the face of his quarterback. Third down, seven to the 38. 
Thompson Robinson under pressure. Tries to get out. Throws. Incomplete. But Curtis Bolton had his hands on it. And UCLA will punt once again. And they overloaded that side. You know, they didn't, they only had five offensive linemen in the block. And then Bolton's just going to come right around and find the seam, and he's going to be right in the face of the quarterback. Trust me when I tell you this, folks. There is no chance as a quarterback when you get that type of rush in your face that quickly. You've got to block the inside gaps first and let the outside rushers go to give the quarterback the amount of time he needs to get the ball out of his hand. Flintoff ready to send it away. His third punt of the game. C.D. Lang is the deep man for OU. And that one takes a bounce and will be down at the 15-yard line. A 47-yard punt. And here's a quick word. For right, the expectations are too high here. They talk about OU DNA. That means you have to go out and win the conference championship and compete for the national championship every year. First and 10 at the 15. I think this young man is down for the task. Play fake. Murray with time. Delivers to the sideline and incomplete. Hollywood, the intended receiver. That one thrown high. Darnay Holmes in coverage. Good protection there. And saw this last week with Murray when he sits in the pocket and holds it till the third and fourth man in the progression he doesn't set his feet and the ball sails on him and I listen I understand how that feels your your, your heart rate starts going a little bit quicker because you feel like that rush is going to collapse in on you but he's got to relax at that moment get his feet set and try to throw a more accurate pass second and ten at the 15. Murray looking winds up down the field It's pretty good coverage from Metters. There's just a little bit of a step. And out and up, he's got the step. But look how accurate that pass was. Exactly like you said it, Gus. Right on the money. First and 10 of the 40. And a run at this time. Anderson. Anderson. High knees. Stopped by Tyree Thompson. This type of situation here, plus side of the 40-yard line, this is when you generally see some sort of play action RPO, maybe taking a shot for Oklahoma. Second down at five at the 35. Murray over the middle, caught. C.D. Lamb again. And I tell you what, Parker, C.D. Lamb, Hollywood Brown, Cal Kutera, they've got some receivers yeah. on this Oklahoma team. Good speed on the outside. You know, generally teams are either fast or they're powerful. Oklahoma has that rare combination where they've got both. Big, powerful offensive line, big running backs, and then the speed on the outside. Very tough to defend. First down and 10 to the 20-yard line for OU. Looks, tries to throw that one over a defender for Anderson. And once again, we see he's having a little problem with that pass. I think it's, I think personally it's a timing issue, right? I mean, Riley knows that's going to be a big play. He's, he called the perfect play. He's got blockers set up. He's got it in the right guy's hand. And all Murray has to do, because it's actually not really a pass. It's like shooting a free throw out there. You know, it's, it's literally a flick of the wrist, and if you do throw it, generally you're going to overthrow it. It's one of those nuanced style of, of throws that only experience teaches you how to make for a quarterback. Second and 10 of the 20 for Murray. And a timeout called by the Sooners. Murray didn't like what he saw at the line of scrimmage. 23 seconds to go in the first quarter. OU up by a touchdown with the ball. They got him behind the chains here, so it's second and long, Gus. And they got him into a, more of a one-dimensional type of mindset. They have got to think to themselves, a kick, a, an attempted field goal is a huge win for the defense. The Sooners have so many weapons. Second and ten at the 20. Anderson. Look at the cut. They don't get to the 10. Maybe inside the 10, depending on the spot. Rick Wade, pick it with a the tackle. There's only five guys in the run box. 
There's five offensive linemen. That's a math equation, folks. You can block everybody there, hand the ball off. You're going to gain positive yards, and they do so there. And I'll tell you what, Joel, talk to the coach right against today. These offensive linemen, not only the starters, but the backups, most of them are bona fide future pros. Yeah, they generally uh, recruit those type of guys up front. Something to watch there, though. Anderson got up a little gingerly and limped off the field. So I'll try to get you an update soon. And that's the end of the first quarter. Competitive first quarter. Sooners with a 14-7 lead. Back to Norman right after this. Mahoma Rodney Anderson uh, has to walk off the field and back into the locker. Well, he, he just got banged up in the last play. They went and they checked his knee like once or twice on the sideline, and he gingerly walked back to the locker room. Ginny, I know you were standing right down there. What, what can you tell us about what transpired? Well, unfortunately, they didn't look at it for very long. He was pointing towards that kneecap, his right knee, and it was a pretty quick decision to get him off and take him inside, guys, and not a lot of good looks from around as they were watching them examine that knee. And this is a guy that has dealt with a lot of injuries in the past. He had a knee injury in 2015, lost his season. A neck injury in 2016, lost his season. Had that amazing year last year, and he was grabbing for that right knee right away. It's the end of the run. Man. So, next man up, Trace Sermon. First down and goal at the 10. Sermon. No, it's Murray on the option, and he scores. Kyler Murray. The motion is really what does this. See Hollywood Brown, he's going to be racing around in motion. That opens up the back end. The linebacker goes way out with the motion. And the defensive end, he crashed down in the inside. Easy read for Murray. He's a good enough athlete one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to make that play. So start of the second quarter, Rodney Anderson leaves and goes into the locker room. Sooners at a Kyler Murray touchdown to take a 21-7 lead. Let's go to Los Angeles and check in with Greg Wolf. Darnie Holmes, the deep man, as Seibert prepares to kick it away. Drives this one again. Not a chance for the return man. So what does UCLA do, Joel, to get their offense clicking a little bit against this Oklahoma defense? In the two series that they've been able to move the ball a little bit, on, on either first or second down early, they've gotten the ball to Caleb Wilson and gotten an easy first down. One was a big, long play that ended up putting them in scoring position. Last series, they got the ball just slipping out into the flat. Look for them to try to get the ball to either Caleb Wilson or Theo Howard, the two most experienced pass catchers, and try to alleviate some of that that the front seven has put on Dorian Thompson-Robinson. First down to the 25. Thompson-Robinson hands it off. And this is Kelly. Neville Gallimore says, no way. Bledsoe in on it as well. Yeah, that's, that's a play that I feel like is, is a little too safe. I think they need to be more creative on first down and give their quarterback a chance on second down. Second and 10 at the 25. Thompson-Robinson to throw. Underneath, and it's caught in the first down for the Bruins. Nicely done as Diamond Lee found a soft spot. Good pitching catch there, moving the chains. And again, the first first down in the series, so important for a young quarterback to establish some rhythm within the series. A gain of 11. First down at the 36. Quick strike. In the flat, it's caught. Pabico. And Christian Probico is driven down by Ryan Jones after a six-yard gain. This is clearly one of the situations where you're going to need the short passing game in order to open up the run game a little bit later. So they've gotten a first down, a little dink and dunk here. Maybe now they can go back to the run game. Second and four. Low snap handled by Thompson Robinson. Kelly picks up the first down as he slashes through. Ryan Jones, Khalil Houghton. 
with the tackle for the Sooners. A nice read there from Dorian Thompson Robinson. He gets the edge for the running back. It was a clear lane, gives that ball, and another first down for UCLA. Good series here. This freshman has some poise, Joel. He does. I, I have loved the fact that he does not flinch. He, he does not waver. This guy is unfazed. First down at midfield. And he'll hand it off. Allen straight ahead. Allen the tackle by Ryan Jones once again. Boy, if Ryan Jones didn't make that play, he had a seam, so Jones had to fly down and make that tackle before the speedster got it in gear. Three-yard pickup, second and seven at the 47. Thompson Robinson going through his progression, steps up, knocks the throw, and another first down, Diamond Lee. Going to get the pressure from Oklahoma, and that pressure is going to show up right from that defensive tackle area. And he just steps up and then keeps his eyes down the field and finds a completion. Play fake, Thompson Robinson winding up. And it's tackled from behind. Nicely done by Ronnie Perkins, the freshman from St. Louis, who they're really high on here in Norman. They've got a couple of great true freshman players. One of them we've already talked about, Brendan Radley Hiles, they call him Buki. The other is Ronnie Perkins from St. Louis, four-star recruit, played really well a week ago and at 254 pounds. He's very explosive and fast. You saw that on the last snap. Second down and 12 after the three-yard loss. Hold a run for me. Bolu pounding forward Neville Gallimore. I tell you, we've been mentioning Neville Gallimore's name a lot over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and one of the things that they kept talking to us about is all three of those guys up front, Kenneth Mann, Neville Gallimore, and Armani Bledsoe. Armani Bledsoe, they're going to be much better just from experiment, experience excuse me, and development. And we're seeing that come to fruition. Third down and seven at the 32-yard line for the Bruins. Oklahoma showing blitz. Here they come. Thompson Robinson and Trevor and he's wrestled down. He got decked by Curtis Bull. Mike Stoops dialing up the pressure as a defensive coordinator. What I love here is that you're going to get Bolton, and he just kind of slow plays it, and then he's going to show up late. Watch how he does this, and we saw Murray do a similar thing, and then he shows up late, and he's there for the quarterback, almost like a spy. He's not a rusher right away, but Thompson Robinson's got nowhere to go once he wants to try to tuck it. So this will be the fourth punt of the first half for the Bruins. Flint's off. Stands at the 46, 47 yard line. CD Lamb, the deep man, end over end kick. And it's fair caught at the seven. 10.52 to go, second quarter, 21 to seven, OU. Lead and ball right after this. In 2003, UCLA came to Norman looking to upset the number one team in the nation, but Antonio Perkins had other plans. He set NCAA single-game records for punt return yards with 277 and touchdowns with three, leading Oklahoma to a 59-24 win. Tell you what, though, I know it's a slow start for Chip Kelly, but you know that in the next couple of years, oh, yeah. he's going to get this thing going at UCLA. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Bruin fans, be patient. This is going to work. First down and 10 to the 8-yard line. Murray spinning. Gets out of bounds at the 15. Darnay Holmes there to usher him out of play. And, and it's just so different from his. Everyone wants to compare it to Oregon, right? Ah, he was great at Oregon. It's going to be great here. Listen, he was the OC and was fr promoted from within. Very similar to Lincoln Riley here. It was built at Oregon, and they just kept it going and even accelerated it to those four straight BCS games, including a national championship appearance. Here, he's got to build from the foundation. This is foundational, folks. This is, you know, kind of from scratch here. This is homemade. Second down and two. Serving, looking, and he'll be dropped for a loss. Think about this UCLA team. A lot of guys aren't here that were here last year. 17 guys leaving the program. There have been suspensions and injuries. And that type of turnover is pretty normal when you're going through what I would call a culture change in a program. And they're playing a lot of young players. 11 true freshmen played last week. Got a true freshman 
all over the field on offense and defense, but I can tell you this, this defense is way better than they were a year ago. They're the worst rushing defense in the country. They are much more stout already so far this year. Third down and two with the 16. Murray with time underneath, and that one is deflected, intended for Hollywood, and the UCLA defense holds, and they'll force the Sooners to punt it away. Keyshawn Lucier South looks like he deflected that football number 11. And he was double teamed but did exactly the right thing, right? He didn't try to make some sort of spin move. He just took the double team and then he said, I'm going to get my hands up in the passing lane. He's able to bat that ball down. So Cyber to punt it away for the second time at his own two. Phillips, the deep man, standing at the 40. Low snap, handle. Short kick, takes a bounce. And UCLA will have pretty good field position starting at the 43-yard line. Down 21 to 7. 9.26 to go. Here comes that true freshman. True freshman out of Las Vegas. Came in last week for Wilton Spate, who injured his back. Here's the handoff around the corner, and it's Allen the speedster trying to get down the sideline. Nice pursuit by the Oklahoma defense. Mike Stoops talked a lot to us yesterday about the fact that he wanted his outside linebackers to play more physical. They've done a pretty good job today so far, not allowing UCLA outside of their contain to get those big runs. Second down and eight at the 45. Thompson Robinson, quick strike, and it's caught. Jordan Wilson with the reception. Yesterday, Coach Stoops kept talking about Chip Kelly, and he kept talking about the veer, the veer. What's the veer, Jordan? Well, the veer is like the old-school option, except now it's run from the shotgun in which you don't block a down lineman. Sometimes it's the defensive end. Sometimes it's the defensive tackle. But the problem is is that it's so difficult to defend because the offensive linemen just automatically go up and block your linebackers, and then the quarterback can make the defensive lineman wrong. Incredibly tough to defend. Third down and three at midfield. Here's a handoff. Pull a run for me, and he'll plunge forward to pick up the first down as Neville Gallimore finally got him to the ground. Good vision there. He went to the left side, and it was really shut off. Like, there was nowhere to go for Ola Run for me, and so he slid over to the right side, and he was able to find a seam and fall forward for the first down. Ola Run for me, a powerful runner, 5'10, 222 pounds. First down at the 45 for the Bruins. Quick strike, near side. Pabico and Pabico will go nowhere. Murray, as well as Ryan Jones in the vicinity. Ryan Jones. It's a loss of three, second and 13. Thompson Robinson hands it off to Allen straight ahead. And Allen will pick up a couple for Mata. Famatau with the tackle. In this situation, thus in these obvious third down situations, we've seen Oklahoma dial up the pressure and bring extra linebackers and try to disrupt the timing of the young quarterback. Let's see if they do it again here. Third down to 10 of the 45. Thompson Robinson in trouble, and he's sacked for the fifth time. Curtis Bolton, Mark Jackson. Great move by Neville Gallimore. Watch me, he's gonna come to the right side and then he's just gonna swim around the guard and get right in the face. You've got all those Oklahoma Sooners right in the face, but the key is the middle pressure, Gus, because that's where the quarterback can escape to if the edge rushers get to him quickly. The middle pressure allows the quarterback to go nowhere. C.D. Lamb back deep. Let this one 
take a bounce and go into the end zone for a touchback. 21 to 7. Oklahoma Sooners coming back with the ball. The defense starting to stand out for OU. Will Tate throwing the ball a lot last week yeah, against BYU. I, I don't think that's the recipe you want. You know, Khalil Tate has not won a game as a starting quarterback in which he's thrown the ball over 20 times. So throwing it 34 times is probably not the deal. Hollywood Brown with the reception as he turns it up and picks up a first down. Anderson still out. Remember, went back to the locker room. So now you've got Trey Sermon in the backfield, along with Marcellia Sutton, senior from LaGrange, North Carolina. First down to the 33 for Oklahoma. Here's Sermon, squeezing through the hole. And dragged down from behind by Thompson. And Sermon. Tyree Thompson. Sermon, Gus, is not just any backup. I mean, this guy was the starter for the majority of the first half of last season, including in a game in which they went and beat Ohio State. So he's certainly capable. Second down is six at the 37. Murray to the far side. And Hollywood picks up the first down. One thing Coach Riley talked about when, he, when we mentioned Trey Sermon to him was how he's really improved his body. Yeah. As a true freshman a year ago, he was very talented, but he didn't have the makeup yet physically of a veteran college football player, and he has trimmed himself down a little bit, and Lincoln Riley put it in a very simple way. Now, he looks like an OU running back, and I was like, oh, okay. I get what you're saying there. You know, guys like DeMarco and Adrian Peterson and Rodney Anderson and Lonley. P. Ryan, all those guys. Joe Mixon, first down to 10 at the 44. Sets up deep. Near side on the money. Calcaterra gobbled it up. Close to a first down, and they really love Grant Calcaterra's pass catching ability. They think he's like Spider Man. He can take anything down. He's probably a better pass catching tight end, split tight end, than Mark Andrews was, who just won the Mackey Award. Now, Andrews was fantastic, but Calcaterra has a little bit more route running nuance and a bit more speed. Second down and one. First down there you go. That's 224 pounds of need. A Darius Pickett throws himself under the chariot. How would you, how would you like to tackle this? No way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Darius Pickett, Richard Sr. from Richmond, California, is a tough young man at 5'11, 198. Tackling the six foot, 224 pound servant. And this guy, and he's experienced too. 85 tackles a year ago, second on the team. Did a nice job just bringing Sermon to the ground. First down to the 42. 338 to go. Murray. Captain Terry turns it up. First down, OU. Murray has just settled in nicely. He he looked a little rushed early. Saw him with three incompletions. Those three incompletions were more than he had all of last week, but he has settled in and in this second quarter played very nicely. And this series, I think, has been his best series so far. Ninth overall pick by the Oakland A's as a baseball player. Got 4.7 million bonus. First down to 10 of the 32. Murray looking, delivers, Paul, far side, C.D. Lamb, Belitnikoff award candidate, Nate Betters with the tackle, along with Hollywood Brown. C.D. Lamb was quiet last week, but he has played really well this week. Late flag, like there was a hold on the offense. The officials, microphone not working, Try to pick it up here. Might have been the right guard. Maybe it was Drew Samia, number 75. Oh, yeah, that big hook. Right around number 44, that's Martin Andrus, sophomore from Long Beach. A little ticky-tack. I don't think Andrus was going to get to the quarterback. I don't necessarily agree with that. There's a, there's a hold like that on every snap of the game. 
A lot of California kids on this OU roster. Sevilla from Sacramento. Alcatara from California as well. First down at, at 20, and Sermon gets to the 45. Chris Barnes defensively for the Bruins. Good patient run there. Got himself right in the crease of what the offensive line was creating. And Lincoln Riley's going to have to dial something up. Trying to get half of this back. Create a manageable third down situation. Second down to 13. At the 35, Murray to the sideline. And C.D. Lamb again at the... And they call it a catch as Lamb lost his footing, but somehow managed to cradle that football. And that's exactly what they did. They got half of it back. That's a, and if you get more, that's just icing on the cake. But now you're in a third down situation where it's much more manageable for your team. And if you really wanted it, you could still run the football. Third down to three at the 25 after the 10-yard game. Now decides to run it. Turns it up and gets out of bounds short of the first down. So Lincoln Riley has a decision to make. About a yard, yard and a half short. In this area of the field, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to go quickly and just snap the ball and go for it on fourth down. But they're actually going to take their time, bring in the big fellas. Here comes big 94 again. Plus, I love it when they do this. The defensive lineman, Troy James, 304 pounds. We saw him in on a touchdown run for Anderson early in the game. He'll be lined up at fullback. Fourth down and one of the 23. Can UCLA get off the field? Here's a handoff, and the Bruins do get off the field. On the board before the half. First down to the 25-yard line. Hold a run for me. Going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Man, Monty Bledsoe and Kenneth Mann combining on the tackle. I gotta tell you, these first down run calls are just putting them behind the eight ball. And they're going awful slow here, not trying to get the point. I mean, this network inside of 51, now 50 seconds. This is just taking far too long for UCLA. Second down and nine to the 26. Oh man, I mean, this... This was an opportunity to let your freshman cut loose a little bit, and they're just going to go into the half down 14. We'll run for me again. Coming up at the half, Rob Stone, Dave Wanstatt, Matt Leinert, and Robert Smith are standing by with the State Farm halftime show. Gus, two timeouts. They had a minute and 13 left. I mean, I understand he's a true freshman, but a score here, any type of score, would have gone so far. I, I, I just don't I don't like that. I don't like the conservative play here for the Bruins. Well, he's got a true freshman, as you mentioned. Down 14, not bad for UCLA going into the locker room on the road against the number six team in the country. Bing is going to be Trey Sermon in the backfield. Sutton and Brown back deep. This one kicked out of the end zone. Let's go downstairs at the 25-yard line. And he'll hand it to Sermon. No, this is Murray. And he'll get out of, out of bounds at the 30. I tell you what, man, he fools me sometimes, Joel, with that fake to the running back. Great ball handling in the backfield, and he does a great job of reading that all the way through, forcing the de defense to make a decision, but he got hit late on Personal this one. foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. It's an automatic first down. You know, it wasn't... All that late. I mean, he's still in bounds when he gets shoved, but then at the end, he gets kind of popped from one of the UCLA players on the sideline. You know, that, boy, that's tough. I guess it, you could argue if you were the official that he was giving himself up towards the out of bounds and there was no need for the extra shove, but he had not hit that out of bounds line. If I was coaching the defense, I would say, you've got to go until he hits the out of bounds because he's so athletic, he might get the edge and go for a touchdown. So first down at the 45 opening series for Oklahoma to start the second half. Rodney Anderson out. Trey Sermon, number four. The lead back now. Kyler Murray. Dancing. Turns a corner with speed. Murray cross field. Murray making people miss. And finally slides down. Flag on the play. He'll gain about eight. 
ill-advised block from C.D. Lamb. I mean, this is video game stuff from Kyler Murray, but Lamb late blocked in the During back the and got a flag. A legal block in the back. Number two, offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. You saw it right there late. Here's two C.D. Lamb, and he just kind of comes and throws a little block shove to Elijah Gates, the redshirt freshman from Pasadena. And that'll back the Sooners up. Lamb says, my bad. First down. And 11 at the 44. Boy, these safeties are awful close to the line of scrimmage. You just get the, the sense that they're going to go deep to Hollywood on one of these plays. Play fake. Murray looking. Calcaterra. Knocked away by Nate Metters. Well defended. Earlier in the game, Metters got a pass interference because he grabbed late. There, he gets his hands off of Calcaterra right as the ball is about to arrive and then fights with his hands as he's trying to catch it. That's great coverage from Metters. Excellent job. Metters is senior from San Bernardino, California. Second and 11 at the 44. Serving. And he is broken down in the backfield for a loss once again. I'll tell you what, this UCLA defense is playing some strong football. Tyree Thompson with the tackle. And that was just a poor read from Sermon because the block was actually going to be made there. Cody Ford was pulling around the big right, right tackle, number 74, and he was going to get Tyree Thompson blocked. But Sermon cut inside when he should have cut outside. That's what allowed Thompson to make the tackle. UCLA with a chance to get off the field. Oklahoma facing a third and 12 at their own 43. Murray. Over the middle. Complete. That one knocked away at the end. Intended for Hollywood, but Quentin Lake, the sophomore from Irvine, California, knocks it away. Carnell Lake's son. What's the timing of this? See as the route comes open. That ball's got to be thrown right about now, but he throws it once Hollywood breaks out of his route. Now he's waiting, he's waiting, and the defense can break on that, bat the ball down, and Lake does a great job of going up and getting that hand on it, but it was a late throw from Murray that led to the defensive play. That number 37 looks familiar, only in Pittsburgh Steelers colors. So Oklahoma sends it away, Kyle Phillips. With a fair catch at the 20. 13 11 to play third quarter. Here comes UCLA on the field offensively for the first time. Their defense manning up here in Norman, Oklahoma. I believe at this point, Gus, it's got to be first down throws that are going to get them in rhythm. Let's see if Chip Kelly here is your first and 10. And they run it. This is Thompson Robinson. And Thompson Robinson hits the edge quickly. And Looks like he may have picked up a first down. Excellent read by Thompson Robinson. And then he just had the speed to beat. Looked like Kenneth Mann there, 55, and Motley to the edge. Shows you the type of athleticism this kid had. He only played, started for one year in high school at Bishop Norman in Las Vegas. He had to sit behind Tate Martell, who's a Gatorade National Player of the Year. He's now a backup at Ohio State. First down to 10 of the 31. A little infamy in the backfield. They'll give it to him with a huge hole in the run for me. Picks up seven and a half, maybe eight yards on the play. As he stopped by Neville Gallimore. True freshman center, Christophany Murray, had a great block. Good snap, and then he got all the way up to the linebacker and really was the key block on the play. They'll run it once again in the first down. Hold the run for me. Good tempo here. We haven't seen them work with tempo a lot, but they do have good tempo on this series, getting up to the line of scrimmage. And then what they're doing is they're trying to control the game from the sideline and from the box and give the play calls to Thompson Robinson once they get Oklahoma lined up in their defensive set. First down at the 44. Opening series of the second half for UCLA. Thompson Robinson pivoting. He's got to get rid of it. And somehow it's caught by Caleb Wilson. But it will be for a loss. 
couldn't tell if this was going to be a fumble or a forward pass. So Caleb Wilson, I'm sure, is in the same boat, and he says he's got to grab that out of the air. Probably would have been an incompletion if he bats it down to the ground, and they would have saved some yardage, but you can't be sure. And so you've got to get that ball out of the air, and Caleb Wilson does it. Boy, the pressure on Dorian Thompson-Robinson has been immense. OU has five sacks on the day. Devon Monster comes in for Thompson Robinson, maybe for only one play. Second and 21. The handoff pulling up for me. And Amani Bledsoe there defensively. Dorian Thompson Robinson, his helmet came off, so of course you have to leave the play, the playing field for one play, back on the field. Nothing serious. And now he's faced with the third down at 18 at the 36. UCLA struggling to move the ball, especially through the air. As we're out on the speedster in the backfield. And they're giving it out straight ahead. And powering his way to midfield as Curtis Bolton brings him down. Almost yeah, popped one free. That's a gain of 14 yards, but it brings up fourth down and four. And the Bruins will punt it away. I know you had basically everybody back at the chains. They had three safeties in the game all the way back at the first down marker. And they were fine with the handoff, rally up and make the tackle, even though it got a little bit exciting there at the end. Flint off, punting, C.D. Lamb. It's a goal for his head and into the end zone for touchback. A little over 10 minutes to play in the third. Kyler Murray and the Sooners offense back on the field when we return. Very efficient in this game. They throw it. All day to throw the ball. Underneath. Hollywood Brown with the reception and the first down. And Marquise Brown may be cramping up. Grabbing at that left calf. I mean, Murray had like three days to throw. Three days. I mean, forever back there. Excellent job by the offensive line. And Marquise got contacted there and made a really nice catch. Let's hope that this isn't anything more serious as he landed on that left foot. He was reaching for that left leg area down low like it was a cramp. And they are stretching him out. So let's hope that's the case. Looks like it. He has improved as a wide receiver. I thought last year, Gus, candidly, there was a lot of flash, but not a lot of substance as a wide receiver. He's improved drastically as a route runner, and I think his hands in traffic so far in, in the two games that we've seen, and I can guarantee you NFL evaluators are paying attention because with his speed and his home run ability, any semblance of the ability to run routes in the middle of the field, and this guy is going to be a hot commodity for the National Football League. Unbelievable speed. Just not right now, hobbling off, yeah, the, hobbling off the field. <laughs> when the trainer's laughing, that's when you know it's just it's, a crack. It's okay. It's a crack. <laughs> Everybody taking a deep breath there. Yes. Especially with Rodney Anderson already out yes. in this game. Exactly. First down and 10 at the 30. Kyler Murray. Marcellius Sutton in at running back. Here's Marcellius Sutton exploding through the hole, and he's chopped down to Darius Pickett once again coming up, and there's a, another suitor getting up slowly, which is Marcellius Sutton. Helmet comes off, and we'll have to leave the game. And roll with Trey Sermon back. They do have a deep stable of running backs here, and Sutton getting a few more carries because of that injury to Rodney Anderson. But I think his helmet just kind of came loose and maybe came off. He was dealing with a chin strap or ear pad issue. But Pickett, man, I tell you what, this guy, He's tough. Darius Pickett, is laying some wood. He is always near the line of scrimmage. Second and six of the 34. Murray. And caught on the sideline. Nice throw, A.D. 
Miller. With the reception, Nate Metters brings him down, but for Oklahoma, that is a gain of 15 yards. Beautiful route here, forcing it upfield, and then I thought the throw was tremendous. Back shoulder throw, just allowing the wide receiver to fall out for the completion. First down to the 49, high snap, Murray out of the pocket. And knocked away by, guess who, a Darius Lincoln. This dude's been all over the place. A senior from California, 12 starts a year ago, 85 tackles. He was in the top 20 in the Pac-12 in tackles last year. Last week against Cincinnati, he had a career-high 15 tackles. He's a lot impact award watch list. That's Ronnie Lott. Well, that's a really cool award that honors the best defensive player in the country that also has a huge impact off the field as well. So a big honor there for Pickett to be on the Lot Impact Trophy Award watch list. Second down and 10 at the 49. Murray underneath, deflected at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Looks like Keyshawn Lucier South got another hand on the football. That's his second deflection that he's come up with tonight. They today. Yeah, and they haven't been able to present a lot of pressure in Murray's face, but they have done this a couple of times. And remember, Murray only stands at about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, he's under six feet, and so the opportunity to bat that ball down is there for the linemen, and they are taking advantage of it the second time for Lucier South today. Third down, 10 at the 49. Sutton back in and running back, number 21. They were all messed up in their formation, and Lincoln Riley just took a timeout from the sideline. 8.31 to go, third quarter. Timeout on the field, 21-7 OU. Third down, 10 at the 49. Empty backfield for Murray. Here's Kyler, the throw in. Caught C.D. Lamb, and C.D. Lamb still running. Terrific throw and catch. Murray to C.D. Lamb. Gain of 25. Check out Murray's eyes. He's going to throw this right on time. He threw one previous in this game late to Hollywood Brown, and it caused an incompletion. But there, that was right on time, right at the back of the linebacker. Easy first down. So first down and 10 of the 26. And Murray pulls it out, runs it. First down and more. As he slides down inside the 10, I'm telling you, Joel, this kid's got some Russell Wilson in him. Check out his eyes all over the defensive end. As soon as Keyshawn Lucier South comes in, number 11, boom, he takes off around the edge, and he's got the athleticism to make guys miss, even Pickett, who's been having a great game. That's a gain of 15, first down and 10 at the 11. And it's Sutton still on his feet. Touchdown, OU. 11-yard run for Marcellus Sutton. And the Sooners take a 27 to 7 lead. Well, it's all about reading that pulling guard and tackle, and he did a great job. Both guard and tackle are going to swing around, and then he stays up. It seems like going into the end zone gets contacted awful close before that right knee hits and when the ball actually crosses the plane of the goal line. Celia Sutton, the senior from LaGrange, North Carolina, transfer from Lackawanna College. And with Rodney Anderson going out, Sutton's carries are going to go up along with Trey Sermon. And I don't know, was he down, Joel? You think I, his knee was down? It's going to be awful difficult to overturn this because we don't have a look where we can get simultaneous of knee down and ball position. That's why I think they're going to let this stand and go ahead and attempt this point after. It's Austin Seibert in for the extra point. And it's good. 28-7 OU, 7.37 to go third quarter. Sooners moving and grooving at home. Like they did last week, but this is one of the great fan bases in all college football, and it's a joy to be here, it really is. Now, it wasn't a joy to play here, but it's a joy to come back <laughs> to Apple and witness game. Much better now, right? Yes. Wish I could be there. But I think Michigan-Ohio State is a I was pretty say, big game, too. Were, <laughs> 21 to go First down to 10 of the 25. Oh, man. Kelly. There's Pookie. That's right, Pookie. 
Bradley Hyatt. I'll tell you, this young man, they say he's got a cult-like following. I mean, he's got like 154,000 Instagram followers. He's a true freshman. It's incredible. Wise beyond his years. Second and five at the 30. And a handoff to Allen, trying to pick his way forward, and nothing doing. Mark Jackson, first man to him. But there is a flag on the play. Yeah, late flag here down the field. I, it looked like there was a little bit of a cheap shot taken by Demetric Felton, number 10 for UCLA. He hit Parnell Motley, number 11, the corner, down the field, way kind of late, way away from everything, and that's what I think drew the flag. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 10, offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. The down will count, third down. Now Chip's not going to be happy with that. Listen, they're, they're trying to change and build a culture here, and this is way after the play. You see, he just kind of comes up and takes a cheap shot on Parnell Motley. Motley ran back up to him, but to his credit, didn't do anything. You know, just some jawing there, and Motley, at least for his part, did not come up and shove back and draw another penalty. Third down at 20 at the 15. Adam. And he won't get there. Right now, this Oklahoma defense bend, but not break philosophy as they force UCLA to punt it once again. Yeah, those long third down opportunities, Gus, you're exactly right. Ben, don't break. They're fine giving up that 10-yard carry. Rally up, make the tackle. Hey, man, you, you've been you've listening well. <laughs> Maybe I should be an analyst. That's where I hear the... Hey, stay in your lane. <laughs> I like you, buddy. <laughs> Look at you. Here's C.D. Lamb. Straight ahead. C.D. Turn Mo Osley with the saving tackle. See, my man, that's when you're great. That call was amazing, and that return was amazing. C.D. Lamb, he's looking back. That's the last tackle he needs to break, and he's unable to do it. You got to wonder if he doesn't look back, and he just looks forward and tries to turn on the Jets. Is he able to pull away and potentially score? That was Mo Osling chasing him down, makes the saving tackle. You know, I was listening to my boys on the franchise when I was coming to the stadium today, and one of the commentators said, be careful. Today is going to be a big day for C.D. Lamb, and man, was he right. Yeah. Six catches, 111 yards, and a punt return like that. And all of a sudden, OU in better shape. First down and 10 at the 11. Murray, broken play. And Murray goes down at the 10. Toyaloa with the tackle. Looks like there was some confusion, partner. Well, that was the exact same play they ran on our AT&T business edge-to-edge -edge highlight there out of halftime. It's the exact same play, but UCLA was ready for it. And you see the confusion. I thought it wasn't necessarily confusion as much as it was. The hole was just not there on that side. The motion didn't pull the defenders out. There was nowhere to go, and Kyler Murray just kind of ducked with it. Second down and nine at the 10. Murray looking. Murray in the end zone. The team, Joel Clapp, is good as it gets. Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, watch out. I'll tell you what, that, that hole in the back of the end zone, it was so small. And Murray does a great job of anticipating the throw right over the safety in the linebacker's head before they could even get their hands up. 34 to 7, 519 to go third quarter. OU starting to pour it on now. Extra point cyber goes down. 35-7 OU, the number six team in the nation. Picking up on where they left off last week against Florida Atlantic. Kyler Murray. Starting to show that this is his team now, and he's got his boys with him. Splash. In his face. 
when he's been reading the defense. And I think that accuracy criticism is a bit much considering he only played a few games at Texas A&M. He only started one game last year. He's got to play. You're a quarterback. you got to play. Thank you very much, folks. i got an incredible story on Jenny Tab, and I want to tell you as soon as we get an opportunity. How about this? Let's do it now. Jenny Tab walked on at Boston University on the lacrosse team. She was a hockey player coming out of Minnesota. She walked on, got cut. Coach emailed her telling her that she got cut. She told Coach, give me two weeks and I'll be just as good going to my right as any player on your team. She came back. Two weeks later, Coach handed her number five and said, welcome, you were right. Second and ten, that ball knocked down. I love that story. I love that story. Bookie. Bookie Wilson, uh, Bookie Radley Hiles, and Jenny, there's no substitute for perseverance at this level, is there? Hey, well, I'm just hanging out with plenty of good walk-ons because Joel has done it even more successfully than me. But, Gus, thank you for, for telling that story. I have to say those years at BU were some of my best. That's right. JT, third and ten at the 25. This young man, he's going to persevere. He's going to be a good one. Thompson Robinson getting his experience right now as a true freshman. The throw. And incomplete. You know, I've, I've been in these situations, and this is the ultimate baptism by fire. And, and there's nowhere else to go, right? I mean, listen, he's the guy. He's the future. You know, there's, there's nowhere else for Chip Kelly to go, right? You've got to go out there and take your lumps and learn. And unfortunately, he's doing that with a lot of other young players, in particular on the offensive line, who are not giving him a lot of help. Punt goes away. And Lamb allowed to take a bounce and go out of bounds. Was against Cincinnati. He will succeed at UCLA. Just a matter of time. First down. Sermon catches it out of the backfield. What kind of adjustment does this Oklahoma team make? Uh, you know, Rodney Anderson's got that big knee brace on. We don't know when he's going to return in street clothes right now. So with him out of the lineup, Sermon, Sutton, they have to really take a big step forward. They do. And listen, Sermon's going to be up to the task. Like I said, he won the starting job early last year as a true freshman. He was the starting running back when they went to the shoe and beat Ohio State in that great game. And then Rodney Anderson had the amazing, you know, last eight games of the season. So they're ready for this. Murray. Oh, incomplete, but C.D. Lamb. What? Now he's showing off. I mean, the guys at the franchise must have hit him in his ear. Here's what's crazy is Woo! that foot. I know this sounds crazy. His foot was not that far from being in bounds. I think it barely hit the sideline. He's going to go back to the huddle and be like, hey, just wanted to let you know that I could. <laughs> Third down and eight at the 27. That was, crazy. that was incredible. Odell Beckham type reception. Delay a game. Number one, offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Well, it's going to give UCLA a great chance to get off the field here. Murray's got to know better than that. Understand where the play clock is. Third down, 13. Murray with the handoff to Sutton. And Sutton breaking tackles, and he picks up a first down. A 14-yard gain on third and 13. Darius Pickett came up and just drilled the wide receiver who was trying to block. That's right there. 83 was trying to get a block. That Nick Basquin, former walk-on senior, but Pickett did not attack the ball carrier. And that's what allowed Sutton to wiggle by for the first. First down at the 36 for Kyler Murray. 
He knows how to keep everybody's hands full. Murray, bad snap. Winds up. And Kyler Murray didn't put enough air under that football, and UCLA forces the turnover. So the Bruins will take over first down to 10 at their own 25. And here's a handoff straight ahead, not a lot of room, and the Bruins will be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Good play there from Trey Brown from his corner spot, crashed all the way in on the inside, was able to get to the ball carrier before he got going. Second and ten of the 25-yard line. Thompson Robinson off his back foot this time. And he throws the strike to Caleb Wilson. That was a well-thrown pass. And he had pressure in his face. Amani Bledsoe, the defensive lineman, number 72, was right in his face. Wilson ran a great route on the outside. That was the best ball that Dorian Thompson Robinson has thrown today. Right on the money and on time. Excellent job. Gain of 28, first and 10. Now it's Marcel Irby who comes in at running back. Kelly on the run for me. Casimir Allen have all gotten carries. Now Irby gets a shot. Caleb Wilson, I've known him since he was in elementary. His dad was a defensive line coach at Colorado when I played there. Now he's a D-line coach for Philadelphia. So because they played on Thursday, he gets to come back. Chris Wilson played here at Oklahoma, is in the stands, getting to watch his son here live. Very cool. Tell you what, his Eagles look good as Irby looking good, puts up the first down. And our Jenny Taft had a chance to talk to Dad. Well, about 30 family and friends are here cheering on Caleb. And, you know, earlier this week, Caleb told me, my dad's my best friend. I mean, this is so special for me to have him here, not only cheering me on, but watching me. But something Chris made clear to us, guys, this is the one and only he is rooting against the Sooners. That's right. He recorded 303 tackles in a four-year career at Oklahoma and was a two-time All-American and two-time team captain. Chris Wilson. And I loved playing for Chris when he was on our coaching staff. And what I loved more was that Caleb would come out, Gus, almost every day as a, just a kid, right? I mean, he's just in elementary. And he would run with a football, a uh, regular-sized football, and he'd run up to me and be like, hey, can we play catch? <laughs> every day, man, I would throw this kid hundreds of footballs when he was little. He had great hands then. I'm telling you, he had better hands than our wide receivers. Second down and eight, that would throw behind the intended receiver, Pabico, so you know what that means. You're an old man now. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, man, we got one of the head coaches to start calling him me. Mr. Clack, <laughs> sir. Oh, my goodness. Third down and eight at the 33. This is as long as I'm better looking than you. Well, uh, many are called, brother. You are chosen. <laughs> Thompson Robinson in trouble and sacked. Trey Norwood, the sophomore from Fort Smith, Arkansas, nicely done. We got a flag here on the play. It was thrown deep in the defensive backfield on the 20 yard line on the near side. There's no foul on the play. Fourth down. Well, Mike Stoops is getting everybody involved. They're blitzing from everywhere. Troy Norwood is a corner. He's lined up on the slot. He comes on the blitz. UCLA has just been unable to locate some of those blitzers, and he was a free rusher. Mike Stoops doing a great job dialing up that pressure. So fourth down at 13. The Bruins going for it. Thompson Robinson. Batted in the air and incomplete. Wilson, the intended receiver, and the Bruins will turn it over on downs. This Oklahoma defense is swarming to the football. Better look right here. That is, I think that's a good point, Oof. but when you're looking at these plays, 
you really can't take that into consideration. It's what does the player delivering the blow, what does he do? Now we'll see. Uh, Dean could go either way here. After review, there's no foul for targeting. It will be first down, Oklahoma. All right, thank you very much, Dean. I, I think that was a good removal of the foul. I, I, I really do. And I know Chip's going to be upset with that, but, but again, there were no indicators for targeting. He did not launch. It wasn't crown the helmet, and it wasn't forcible head or neck area. So, candidly, I, I think that was a good removal of the penalty. So the Oklahoma offense comes back on the field, leading 35-7, to under a minute to play here in the third quarter. First down at their own 38. Marcellius Sutton, back-to-back -back touchdowns, week one and week two. They'll give it to him running right as he turns the corner and slices his way forward, crossing the 40. Love these stories. Guys like Sutton had to go to junior college. Lackawanna, like you mentioned earlier, Gus, and now getting his shot. And listen, we saw this, like I said, a year ago where Rodney Anderson wasn't really a factor until the last eight games, so we don't even know, you know, which back could potentially be the featured back by the end of the year for Oklahoma. That's a deep stable of backs. Also, they've got Pledger, a true freshman who's a very talented kid. He could get some run here in the coming weeks. Got some run last week. Second and five of the 43. Second. Jitterbuggy. And he's caught behind the line. Of and that could take us to the end of the third quarter. Isabor with a tackle for UCLA. And that is the end of the third. 35 to 7. Sooners dominating against the UCLA Bruins. Back for the fourth. Right after this. Jenny Taft with you from Norman, Oklahoma, as we take a look at the scoring by quarters. Oklahoma with 14 in the third. Shutting out UCLA to take a 35 to 7 lead. Well, UCLA had that opening touchdown, and then OU has just flexed their muscle, haven't they? Been good on defense, seen some good special teams plays, but namely the quarterback. It's been very good, Kyler Murray. They're down at six for Murray. Flag on the play. Murray rifles one, and it's incomplete. Intended for Lee Morris, his high school teammate, who got some good news this week through Lincoln Riley. Didn't he? Yes, he did. Offside, number 92 defense, five yard penalty, so first down. Individually, probably had the biggest impact on the game of anybody. You know, the catch and run, I mean, it was such a competitive catch to begin with. And then the run after CD had a great block. Um, that was awesome. Not his first time around here to show up and make some big plays in a, in a big game for us. You're going to have to give him a scholarship at some point? Yeah, I'm, I am going to have to. I'm going to not have to. I'm going to get to at some point. Hey, if you guys, and I'm serious about this, make sure everybody's not. Okay. If you guys have to go out to dinner tonight, take Lee Morris, he's buying the dog shoot! That's right, Lee Morris got a scholarship walk on, his five was a walk on to OU. Now Lee Morris walks on, gets a scholarship. That's saving his family $43,000 a year. I love it. I love it. I think it's my favorite thing about college football. Is and we see these videos out all the yeah. time now, like how the coaches are doing it. And, you know, Lincoln confessed, he was like, listen, I couldn't do it all that creative because we're in the middle of the season. But, you know, I tried to do it the best way that I could. And Lee certainly has earned it. He's done a heck of a job here for Oklahoma. First down to the 45, Kyler Murray. That one deflected and incomplete. They got caught there with no protection on Murray from the corner blitz. Darnay Holmes, number one, came from Murray's right side, and Murray basically just had to throw this away. He's trying to get the ball down the field and just didn't have the time. Holmes was able to get there and force him to throw it earlier than he wanted to. So that'll make his second down and 10. Marcellius Sutton in the backfield. UCLA showing blitz. Pickett comes up to the line of scrimmage. Over the middle and incomplete. Now, what's been the big change, partner, in 
football. Back in the old days, coaches wanted a quarterback that was 6'3", that could drop back and see the whole field. Now you see smaller guys like Russell Wilson or Drew Brees isn't a really big guy. How has offense changed in terms of being able to protect these guys? I think there's just more movement. There's, there's more of of an opportunity to take advantage of space and use athleticism. And the RPO game, the run-pass option game, has allowed shorter quarterbacks at both levels, whether it's college or the NFL, to have more success. Third down and 10. And ball snap low. Murray trying to run. Murray, first down and more. That's what makes these little guys so dangerous. Oh, my goodness. This is a totally broken play. There is a no, this is a no chance play. The ball is dropped. It's kind of a low bat snap. Watch how it's going to come back a little bit low and to the right. And he's unable to handle it cleanly. Hits the ground. So he just replaces the running back in the hole. And now it's just athleticism and speed, man. I mean, come on. That's why. Gus, why are these, why are these quarterbacks on the ground? That's why. You kidding me? And defensive coordinators, they come into the coaches' meetings. They're like, hey, I can't deal with that guy. First down to 10 of the 35. Murray. Down the field. Murray. See What a game. This is the second time today that there's just been a Jimmy's and Joe's throw. My Jimmy's are better than your Joe's. Late and over the middle. And all he's got to do, from Murray's perspective, is put it up so that your guy can go and get it. Lamb did a great job of bodying out Metters. And then he goes and high points the ball and is able to bring it down for a touchdown. Extra point, good. C.D. Lamb, seven catches, 146 yards and a touchdown. He also had a 66-yard punt return. That's Kyler Murray's third touchdown pass of this game. Oklahoma up big. The huge lead over UCLA, the offense partner, really getting it going, and this defense has shut down the rooms. And UCLA has even played really well defensively against the run, but they can't get to the quarterback. So Murray's had all day to throw. And he's been accurate down the field, and then he's had guys that make big plays. So it's been pretty impressive here from Oklahoma. So as you send it away, Seibert has been kicking it out of the end zone the entire day, and he does it again. So Lincoln Riley has to be happy with the team. He put out on the field today. And there's another man that's happy as well. Folks, we're with Big Game Bob. <laughs> All right, Coach Stoops, good to be with good you. Good to buddy. see What's you, up, man. Oh, How are it's you? Good to see you yeah. guys. This is you your guys second year. Best. This is your second year being retired. Uh, how has it been for you? Yeah, it's been better this year. It was it was a nightmare last year, and this year's still tough. But it's it's been better. I'm getting used to it. What do you think of your team? Love it. Uh, they played so well a week ago, and then today today they're playing really well. Uh, also. Uh, as you said, I loved uh, defensively, they played great. Uh, offensively, they've been great as well. I'm surprised uh, they've limited the run game as much as possible. It's been such a weapon for us. Well, that, that run game possibly took a hit with Rodney Anderson leaving the game earlier. Let's hope that he's okay, Coach, for Oklahoma's sake, because I know that when you were the head coach, you dealt with a lot of severe injuries, losing two seasons in his career. Uh, you know, it, it, exactly. It's, he's been, gone through so much adversity. Hopefully it's just, a, you know, a mild sprain, something that you can recover from quickly. 42-7. to seven. Coach Stoops is going to fortunately hang out with us for a little while. Maybe we'll just prepare him for a career, you know, this is his next career. <laughs> That's yes. right. You guys have been working on me. <laughs> Third down and two. Thompson Robinson. And caught at the 45. Is that Caleb Wilson again? That's a 22-yard pickup. That's a true freshman Looks there. like Chase Coda with the reception. Chase Coda from Medford, Oregon. He was the number two recruit in the state of Oregon. Number 27 wide receiver in the country. 
I just got the chance to see Caleb Wilson in the tunnel before the game. You know, his dad uh, was with us for a good uh, amount of time, and Caleb was a youngster uh, here for a long time here in Norman. Chris coached at Colorado, Oklahoma, several stops before landing with Philadelphia exactly. during that Super Bowl ring last year. We tried to text uh, Chris and Tino. I thought they were going to be at the game, so we've been trying to connect. First out of 10 at the 46-yard line. Thompson Robinson going deep. Did he get it? Wow. 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 Theo Howard over the shoulder grab. And I'll tell you what, in the last couple series, we've seen some big-time throws from Dorian Thompson-Robinson. You get the sense that he, he's maturing right before our eyes. Uh, one down the sidelines to Caleb Wilson's a few series ago. Now this one, that one is a perfectly thrown ball. Coach, the defense has got no chance when a ball is thrown that well. That's a great throw and catch. Uh, you know, Trey Brown's right, right there as well as, you know, position. It's as good a position as he can be, and uh, they make it. It's a great play. First down to go at the one, a little run for me, and he's denied. So you go back a long way with Chip Kelly. How long do you think <laughs> it'll take him to get things going at UCLA? Oh, he'll get it going. He's a great coach. Uh, you know that. He's an innovator. I got a chance to bump into him for five minutes ahead of the game, and, uh, Really think, a, you know, love the guy. Think, think he's a fabulous coach, and he'll get it going there. Second down and goal of the two. Bruins trying to get in to make themselves feel a little better. Here in the fourth quarter. And they stay on the ground. All the room for me. Already scored the only touchdown of the game for UCLA, and it looks like he gets a second. As an offensive line really fired off the football, and Bolu Olorunfabi with the touchdown. Left tackle Andre James with a really nice block. He sealed the true freshman Perkins. Ronnie Perkins just kind of got pushed out of his gap, and any seam in the defense inside the one-yard line is going to create a touchdown for the offense. It's so difficult to play defense down there, but a nice job from Andre James, the left tackle. J.J. Molson in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. 42 to 14, 11, 11 to go in the fourth quarter. Coach, will you hang around a little longer? Okay, I'll, <laughs> if you need me, I will. That's right, Joel will pay you at the end of the day, no problem. Here we go. 42-14, <laughs> Oklahoma on top of UCLA. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, and Coach Bob Stoops in the booth. Good to be here with you guys. Always good to be here in Norman. I was telling Gus a little earlier, a lot better now than having to suit up against the Oklahoma Sooners <laughs> and your teams and your defenses, but you certainly uh, handed the keys to a Porsche. Joel, you, you, caught, Riley. you caught us in some tough years, 2003, 4. See, I, I keep telling Gus that. Yeah. I'm like, no, you don't understand, man. We, I had to face like Tommy Harris and Teddy Lehman and Antonio yeah. Perkins, and they were some dudes. We had some special guys for sure, and still do, I guess. Bruins take it away. And this one will be brought out of the end zone by Trey Brown. Trey Brown! Tell you what, Oklahoma has been terrific on special teams today. Now let's go to Greg Wolf in Los Angeles for a game break. Come on, man. Arkansas State. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I was trying to lead you to the water yeah, there, Coach. I know. It. <laughs> Haters, first down and 10 at the 35. Murray to throw it over the middle and caught first down. Oklahoma. This time it's Jalen Robinson. Coach, do you think this guy is going to be able to sustain the efficiency in the passing game that we've seen over the last three years with Baker Mayfield? Well, uh, to some degree, yes. I mean, it's hard to say, can he be a Heisman Trophy winner in the first pick in the NFL draft? Right, I, right. You know, that's a, that's a lot to say. But Kyler's an awesome quarterback, very talented, got a great arm. So I, I, I think he'll be very similar. And at some point, he's going to have to be a huge contributor with his feet. He will be. And I, I think uh, Lincoln Riley is one of the most talented play callers I've ever seen, been around. And he'll he'll know, he'll as the season goes, he'll know what fits Kyler the best, run and pass, and using his feet some, and he'll adjust. 
Well, Kyler has used his feet today. Nine carries, 67 yards. He's averaging 7.4 yards per carry with a long of 15. And how about this? Uh-oh, my son's out there in the slot. My number 25, Drake go. Stoops. Had a good game last week. Get him the ball. Get him the rock. Here's Murray. But incomplete, but there is a flag on the play intended for A.D. Miller. How great is it for you to be able now to just watch your kid play football? It's great. Uh, it was, you know, this has been a huge adjustment, but a lot of parts of it have been fabulous. Other parts have been a struggle, but um, but anyway, I'm, I'm glad That's to be here parents. watching him play. Number nine, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous five. Do, do you go That's home when he comes home? Do you critique his games? Do you call him up, call him up as a head, former head football coach and tell him what he needs to do? Listen, he, he's, he thinks I've taught math my whole life. He, <laughs> think I, he doesn't think I know a thing. <laughs> That's great. As well it should be. First down and 10 at the 36. I think what's, what's interesting from a lot of our perspectives, Coach, and I'd love to get your thoughts on why did you step away? Well, there's, you know, as much as anything to, to own my own time, to do what I wanted to do, and, and uh, you never know what's promised you in life, and uh, it was just time for me. First down at the 36, Pledger. Running the football. I remember meeting you for the first time in Gainesville, Florida, when you first got the job as the defensive coordinator for Coach Spurrier and the Gators. And back then, you know, I look at Hollywood Brown and I say, boy, I tell you, Danny Werfel would love to throw to Reed L. Anthony, Ike Hilliard, Jacquez Green, and a Hollywood Brown type. I bet you they caused you fits when you were their oh, listen, defensive coach. Scrimmages and practice, they, they was a nightmare. Uh, they go up and down the field on me, so it, it was always difficult. And they had Fred Taylor in the backfield to hand it to. He was pretty good as well. Yeah, you think? Second down and five at the 31. Murray with the handoff. Pledger gets to the 20, 15, and down. I tell you, every time you come to Oklahoma, you never know who may run the football yeah. because you always have a great running back somewhere. Great stable of backs. Yeah, always. Uh, we, we've had them for decades uh, around here, so I can remember growing up watching Greg Pruitt, Joe Washington, Steve Owens, on and on and on. Well, you had some good ones during your tenure, there's no doubt, but really, I thought what, what has changed the trajectory was a few years ago, you made some changes on the staff you brought in Lincoln Riley, and since that point, you guys had gone eight and five and, and lost badly to Clemson in a bowl game. You brought in Lincoln Riley, and since then, you got the fourth best record in college football. You know, that change that you made, Coach, was special. Well, I, I a number of things. I wanted to go back to this system of offense uh, was my primary reason. And Lincoln, uh, you know, was a protege of uh, Mike Leach and came up under him. And, and I think we really took off uh, my first year when we hired Lincoln after about the third, fourth game when he really understood what kind of running game we had. Yeah. And, and that's when we really took off. Looks like Odigizua is down. We'll take a quick timeout back with Coach Stoops in the booth. After this, 42 14, Oklahoma. Sooners threatening once again. Gus Johnson, Joe Flat, and Coach Bob Stoops. Coach, you started all of this, all this offensive stuff. What people forget is that Bob hired Mike Leach to be his first offensive coordinator in 1999, and now you, you went back to that well, the protege, Lincoln Riley. So this air raid has been in your DNA for a long time. Murray lofts it up into the end zone. And a flag on the play. It absolutely has. Uh, my key hire, hiring Mike Leach to run my offense. No one in this league anywhere. How'd you, how'd you know about Mike? Didn't you face him well, when he was at Kentucky? I was a defensive coordinator at Florida for three years, That's facing Kentucky with Hal Mummy. Hal Mummy's the originator of this style of offense, and Mike Leach was his protege. And I couldn't hire Hal Mummy away from being the head coach of Kentucky, so I <laughs> hired the next best thing as O coordinator, Mike Leach, and uh, was a key hire for me to start start us in this offense. And we, you know, the, the following year, go on win the national championship. Mark Mangino took over, but we had a, we 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 continued in the same offense. Coach Leach, of course, was here for one year before he got that job at Texas Tech. When I hired Mike, I said, if you come here in a few years, you'd probably be a head coach. One year. <laughs> Murray, and a touchdown for OU. His second rushing touchdown of the day. 
That's the threat. Guys, when they need it, you know, when they when they get into the meat of their schedule and they they need something against a TCU who plays quality defense, or you never know. You get Texas. into the thick of things. Next week at Iowa State, you never know. They play very good defense defense with Matt Campbell as their new head coach. That's be, I think, the difference for Oklahoma is Kyler's feet, coach, because you know as a defensive coach, when a quarterback can run, man, oh, it changes all bets everything. are off. Yeah, there's no question. He, and he's got incredible feet. Uh, quickness, change of direction, speed. Um, he got a great feel for it. Oklahoma, nine rushing touchdowns in two weeks, and this young man is showing that he is the leader. And welcome back, 49-14, OU on top of UCLA with 7.40 to go in the fourth. Gus Johnson, Joe Flatt, and we are pleased to be joined by all-time winning coach Bob Stoops in the booth with us. Kyler Murray's having a really solid day. C.D. Lamb, I'll tell you, these two receivers, C.D. Lamb, Hollywood Brown, they're spectacular. They are great players. C.D. Uh, as a true freshman was great last year. He's even better this year, asserting himself more. And Marquise, he can just, he can, Hollywood can get by anybody. And you recruited him. I, I was uh, on staff, yeah, I did, uh, absolutely. I was in his kitchen recruiting him, he and his mother visiting with him. Uh, quiet, unassuming guy. He was actually wondering if he could even play at Oklahoma. And we were happy to get him as well, this ball picked up by Holmes. Remember telling him, listen, we don't have anybody with your kind of speed, you know, and, and he, he shows it now every week. All right, let's go to Greg Wolf for a game break. Your thoughts, Coach Stoops, watching that Georgia-Oklahoma semifinal game last year? Well, it was a great game. Both, both teams played so hard, so well in so many aspects. It was... It was kind of a, a, a flip of halves in the first yeah. half. OU, you know, did what they needed to do in the second half. You know, Georgia did in overtime. They, you know, they made a play better than we did. So in the end, at the end, re really great game. It was difficult to watch, though. It's hard, hard to be on the wrong end of it. Do you, do you recall your first conversation with Lincoln after that game? Uh, not really. Um, I remember talking to him after our first loss just to when we lost to Iowa State, just to, you know, you got to let it go. Uh, uh, you know, address issues that need to be addressed, but don't, you hold on to, to, to negative feelings that they'll get, they get you again. So you needed to let it pass and let it go and address what needs to be addressed, but you got to move past it. Third down and short for UCLA, and the Bruins will pick up the first down early. A nice spin for the first day. I can't recall you ever having quite as young a team as this UCLA team, but can you take us through like what Chip is is facing right now. Not only trying to build the culture back like you did in '99, but with young players. Yeah, 2005 we had a huge graduating class in 2003 and four, so we had a very inexperienced team in 2005, and it was rough. It, it was hard, uh, you know, just. They may know what to do. They don't have the experience to do it or, you know, make mental mistakes. It's difficult, you know. Uh, they, they know how to take care of the football. There's so many issues with it, with, with inexperience. Yeah, and UCLA, the fourth most inexperienced team in the country as far as underclassmen on the roster, 71%. And it limits, you know, it limits your, your, your schemes and... Sure, people want to oh, go up tempo. Well, if you don't have the experienced quarterback to go up tempo, you may just make things worse. You yeah. Know? So it's just it's easy to say it. It's not easy to do it. That's a great point. Where I live, actually, there's a lot of UCLA fans. It's in Southern California, and I had a lot of them this week ask me, like, well, it didn't look like Chip Kelly's offense. It's like, well, you know, he's just installing it at this point with a young quarterback. There's another good throw. I'm telling you, man, this kid has made four or five really impressive throws. Great throw right there. Chase Cota with the catch. This is true freshman to true freshman. The first year I went up tempo, I, I had Sam Bradford, who's going to end up winning the Heisman Trophy, and that was my purpose to do it. He was a bright, incredibly smart, newer offense. He could do it, but you can't do it with everyone. First down at the 46 for the Bruins. And a run for me, who has two rushing touchdowns today. He'll get about seven and a half, eight yards. Can I get a sense of how much better UCLA is? I mean, last year they ran the ball for just about 113 yards per game. They've done that today against Oklahoma. And defensively, as they push forward, looks like for a first down, they were last in the country stopping the run. They were giving up. 
almost 290 yards a game on the ground. And today, against one of the best rushing teams in the, in America, they've only given up 159 yards on the ground. So I'm saying that for the UCLA fans. Hey, there is tangible growth even in these two losses. Absolutely. Listen, we can really run the football. And another good throw by Thompson Robinson. And this time it's caught by Babico. Coach, I guess I know you want to get back to your family and, and watch your kid play, but the, a million dollar question is you're still a very, very young man. You got a birthday coming up next week. We're not going to tell you your age. <laughs> but is coaching out of the question for you? Are you done or, or you still got that itch? Well, I feel I'm done. You know, at the end of the day, I would never have walked away without a lot of soul searching if this is what I wanted to continue to do. So, never know God's plan for you, but I'll wait and see what he got in store for me. You know, I heard something today that my partner is going to go coach in Colorado, so there may be a spot open next year with me. So, hold that on. would be fun. Hold on, hold on. I'm not ready for that type of stress. <laughs> I'm not ready for that type of stress. Coach Dukes, thank you very much for joining us. And good luck this season watching your son play football. Thank appreciate you, it, Gus. Man. Gus, Joel, you guys are always great to be with. I appreciate you. Love it. You're always the best. You're thank the you. team. That's right. I'm in. Right, 49-14. Oklahoma 4, 14 to go. Lincoln Riley. I guess all the Oklahoma coaches growing his beard now. Coach Stoops has I know, it's it's, got his beard it's, going. And it's the deal, right? Four minutes of play. Now I know what was really happening. You see who was at the door? His boss. His boss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Miss Stoops. They throw this one in the corner incomplete. Carroll was saying, okay, we're done. We're done. <laughs> and he looked at us and said, it's time for me to go. <laughs> but if you're an Oklahoma fan, you're really happy your team producing some solid play. You know, there were some mistakes. Sure. As there always are mistakes in games, but uh, Let me tell you all in all, what you want, though, to your point, when there are mistakes and coachable moments, you're still winning 49-14. Fourth down and six for UCLA. They're going for it. Thompson Robinson in the end zone and touchdown. Nicely done as he puts that one on the money and UCLA scores their third touchdown of the game. And for three straight series, I've seen growth. And that one to Michael Aziki, a true freshman from Rancho Cucamonga, California. See a lot of true freshmen. You know, Chase Coda caught a couple of big passes. Now 21, Michael Aziki. He's 6'5, 215. You can see the specimen he is. Again, UCLA fans, this will turn around. It's his first career touchdown pass. Well done, Dorian Thompson Robinson. So that's that's good stuff, man. Congratulations. Something to build on for the Bruins. They'll take on Fresno State next week at against a defense that was very aggressive. So I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm very impressed. I cannot say this enough. The future is really bright at UCLA, while the present is awful bright here at Oklahoma. Oklahoma has shown me now in back-to-back -back weeks they are a playoff contender. No doubt in my mind. And this one down in the end zone. Let's check in with Greg Wolf. Thank you very much. And your alma mater, though, leading all the road. Jim. Yeah, Greg, where were those two highlights? <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a really good game. Obviously, the emotions for Scott Frost and that team playing their first game. They were rained out last week against Akron. Uh, but Colorado's quietly very good and has some really talented skill position players. Tanner Mordecai has checked in at quarterback. That's because Austin Kendall injured his knee last week against Florida Atlantic and is not available today. Time now for the exception-shattering drive of the game, sponsored by Buick. Well... For me, the expectation-shattering drive of the game was just a three-play drive. All of a sudden, OU was behind the chains. Third and 14, Gus. And then all of a sudden, Hollywood. Lights, camera, action. It was 7-7 at the time, and that set the tone for the rest of the day. It set the tone for the special teams, the defense, the offense the rest of the day. And that was really the, the game-changer for OU in this one. Now they run it with pleasure. So Tanner Mordecai in a quarterback, 6'2", 206 freshman from Waco, Texas. Last week against Florida Atlantic, had a nice game. Two for two for 37 yards, a couple of big throws, and he's one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the nation coming out of Midway High School. Yeah, he was the number 10 rated QB, and 
He received offers from Georgia, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, highly recruited. He's a guy, I, I think that he's got a bright future here. I think Austin Kendall, who is not suited up today after going into the sideline hard a week ago, but Austin Kendall will be the backup and then potentially play when Kyler leaves. But Mordecai has a solid future. And remember, even though he's in the game, they're not burning red shirts of these true freshmen. You can play in four games, retain the red shirt. That is a new rule this year in college football. I love the rule for this reason right here. 222 to go, 49-21, and you get to come in and get your feet wet in college football. I love the rule. Second down and 10 at the 43. Handing it off. Again. It looks like some interesting things have finally uh, been sifted out at Alabama in terms of their quarterback position. Yeah, and and Tua is going to be their guy, Tagovailoa, as he should. I mean, he's he gives them a, a better opportunity to be more dynamic offensively. I think now, that's the greatest play, by the way, I've ever seen in a college football game. That touchdown pass in the national championship. In the situation? Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's especially after, after the sack. Well, he knew he couldn't go to the sideline. He faced Nick Saban after taking the sack, so he had to throw a touchdown. We're down at 8 at the 45. My hope is that they do the right thing for Jalen Hurts and, and retain his red shirt this year. And the way that they do that is just not play him over that four-game threshold. And the reason is because he's going to graduate in December. And then as a graduate transfer, if he can redshirt this year, then he'll have two years of eligibility left. If I'm on the coaching staff or if I'm advising that coaching staff, which they would never ask me, but do the right thing by the player. Allow Jalen those two years of eligibility after he graduate transfers out because he's going to have to. Two is younger than him. Two has proved that he's going to be the quarterback down there. And so you're likely going to see Jalen Hurts somewhere, somewhere else. Some big games going on in college football today. Most notably, Clemson, Texas A&M in College Station. Who do you like in that one? It's, it's tough to go against Clemson. I, I, I love what A&M did in, in week one under Jimbo Fisher. They ran the ball for over 500 yards. Uh, they didn't do it against Clemson. Clemson brings in one of the most talented defensive lines maybe ever in college football. Probably three first-round draft picks and maybe a fourth guy that's going to be a second-round draft pick. Um, and I think that their quarterback situation with Trevor Lawrence, a true freshman, Kelly Bryant, the sophomore, it's going to play itself out to the point where their cream will rise to the top. So I like Clemson in that game. Probably closer than you expect, though, right in the emotion of Kyle Field. Our college football triple header continues next as rivals Iowa and Iowa State go head to head. Then a Pac 12 powerhouse matchup as Bryce Love and Stanford battles UCLA, USC, excuse me. It's all right here on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Who do you like in that Stanford USC game in Palo Alto? If I had to go in one direction or the other, I'd probably lean Stanford. They showed that they could put up a lot of yards and points even without Bryce Love last week. He was shut down by San Diego State, and yet K.J. Costello and J.J. Arcega-Whiteside lit up the Aztecs in the second half uh, for a tune of over 300 yards passing. So the fact that USC didn't stop the run last week against UNLV lets me think Stanford's going to win. Our game here, though, 49-21, to 21, Oklahoma dominant. But Chip Kelly saw some good things, partner, from yep. his team. And it'll be interesting to see how the season plays out for both of these schools. What's interesting for me is each of these coaching staffs, when they turn on this tape and they go to teach, the Oklahoma coaches are going to be looking for what Oklahoma did wrong to try to coach them on that. Chip is going to be looking for what his guys did right in order to show them what they can be moving forward. Contrasting styles moving forward. Chip's going to know what to do, and he's going to get them going. All right, so the final score from Norman, 49-21. Oklahoma improves to 2-0. Kyler Murray was wonderful. 19 of 33, 306 yards passing, three touchdowns, 10 carries, 69 yards, and two rushing touchdowns for Murray. C.D. Lamb, seven catches, 146, and a touchdown, including a 66-yard punt return. And Hollywood Brown, four catches, 88 yards, and a touchdown. Now let's go downstairs to Jenny.
Gus, thank you. Well, Chip Kelly said before the game that he feared Kyler Murray's athleticism. We saw that today. Five touchdowns, three in the air, two on the ground. What stood out to you? Yeah, they were they were pretty aggressive against our run. Uh, gave us some uh, trouble early. Had to make some adjustments. Got uh, Kyler involved a little bit. Uh, he made a couple really nice plays there. And we're a lot tougher to defend when you've got that kind of athleticism back there. Well, I got to ask, Coach, it's so hard when you see a guy like Rodney Anderson on the bench in his street clothes. Is there a further update to provide on the knee? No, not yet. You know, we're hoping for the best, but we'll get in and see, see how he's feeling. Something that stood out to us uh, from Coach Stoops, he said that the defense this year knew that they had to be better. Where have you seen the change? I think really just our, our overall talent level is getting better, our depth is getting better, and then our mentality. And I think we've got some really good young leaders, and we're still making some mistakes, but we're flying around and making a lot of plays right now. All right, fun to watch. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. All right, thank you very much, Jenny. The final score here at Oklahoma Memorial Stadium is the Sooners 49, the Bruins 21. Join us after the break for plenty more post-game coverage.